Hey, hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, based on Amazon SageMaker Studio, I would like to show you how to easily deploy a machine learning model. So I'm going to start from that uh, SageMaker Autopilot experiment that I've run in a previous series of video, but uh, this would really apply to any model that you've trained on SageMaker Studio. So here, um, starting from the experiments window, which is where you would see all the models that you've trained, uh, I can select my uh, SageMaker Autopilot experiment, and I see a whole bunch of different models because, as you probably know, um, SageMaker Autopilot will run hyperparameter optimization and fire up a whole bunch of different models. Um, so I'm gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick the top performing one, okay? But again, this would really work with any model that you've trained. Okay, so I simply click on deploy model. And the first thing I need to pass is an endpoint name. So let's call this marketing AutoML best model. I can select an instance type from really tiny things to pretty large ones. You'll find all the SageMaker supported instances. And you can even pick the new uh, Inferentia instances. Um, so uh, that's for another video, I suppose. So let's um, let's go with uh, T2XL. We'll stick to one instance because we're not going to send any serious traffic to this. Uh, I can also enable data capture. This is based on a service called SageMaker Model Monitor. And Model Monitor will do two things. It, it will help you capture data sent to your endpoint as well as uh, prediction responses. So let's enable both here. Um, I just need to path the, the uh, allocation and the percentage of traffic that I want to grab. And let's go for 100%. So that's the first bit. It's going to capture requests and responses and put them in that location. And then the second thing I'll be able to do later on with a model monitor is actually train, um, build a baseline from the training set and compare uh, incoming traffic, so prediction requests, to that baseline. And, uh, and model monitor is going to look for deviations in data quality um, and it's trying to figure out problems like missing features or features uh, that are, have the wrong type you know, this feature is supposed to be an integer and now it's floats um, or a data drift, um, a, a, a change in statistical properties um, between incoming traffic and the training set. Okay, so that's what model monitor does. And for now, of course, we need to configure uh, traffic. Advanced settings, uh, we can pass encryption keys, we can uh, deploy the endpoint in a VPC. Well, let's not do that. Okay, and we just click on deploy model and it, off it goes, right? So this is really, uh, this is really equivalent to, um, this is really equivalent to uh, what you would do using the SageMaker SDK. Um, but as you can see, you can easily do it using, using model monitor here. So the endpoint will be visible here Okay, uh, so for now it's creating. So let's wait for a few minutes and uh, I'll see you when the endpoint is ready. Okay, after a few minutes, I see my endpoint is listed as in service. And uh, I guess I can see its settings here. Okay, so this was a simple deployment uh, with one single production variant hosting my model. Okay, and I deployed on T2XL. So that's all good. Um, monitoring not, uh, uh, not in place yet. We'll do that later. So let's quickly check that this endpoint works. And uh, I, haven't, I have a simple... Um, So after a few minutes, the endpoint is listed as in service. Uh, we can see some of its settings here, and I can see it was deployed to a single production variant because I only have one model with one T2XL instance. So it's all good. Now let's check that the endpoint works. 
let me go back to the, the notebook I used for the uh, SageMaker Autopilot job and uh, you'll find the link to this notebook in the video description. So remember what we've done. Uh, we downloaded a simple data set. It's, uh, it's a CSV data set for uh, uh, marketing information. So basically uh, each line describes a customer and the last column um, called why says yes or no, did that customer accept a marketing offer? Okay, so this is the model that we trained, and um, I I gave a whole uh, yeah ninety five percent of the data set to SageMaker Autopilot to do its thing, and I saved five percent for me uh, to score uh, the uh, the model. So um, this is the CSV file that I have here, and I can predict it. Okay, so I just need to set the endpoint name. Okay, I just need to import Boto3 and grab a SageMaker client. And then basically this bit of code is going to iterate over each line in the test set, reading the line, dropping the label, right? So uh, simply removing the last column from the line and sending that uh, modified line without a label to the endpoint as text CSV. And then it's reading the response. And then just for fun, uh, we're computing different statistics. So we're counting true positives. So label, um, samples uh, labeled as yes, that are predicted as yes. Uh, false negatives, samples labeled as yes, predicted as no. And then the other ones, right? The true negatives and the false positives. And I'm counting all of these. So uh, let's run this cell. So it's going to predict um, about, I don't know, 2,000 samples, if I remember correctly. Okay, so sending them one by one. Uh, we, could, we could batch them up and, and send, uh, you know, multiple samples at a time, which obviously would uh, uh, make our uh, cell faster here. But uh, it will also make the code a little more complicated. And I just want to show you how simple it is to invoke the endpoint. Just you need the name, you need the content type, and you just need to pass um, your CSV line in this case. Okay, so we're done. And now we can compute additional metrics. So I can print a handmade version of the confusing, huh? <laughs> confusion matrix, sorry. I keep call, calling it the confusing matrix. So now there you go, I'm, I'm officially calling it the confusing matrix. So it's called the confusion matrix. Uh, because it shows us uh, um, the, the true predictions versus the incorrect predictions. Okay, so on the diagonal here, we see true negatives and true positives. And obviously, we like those to be max values. And we'd like those, the other di diagonal to be zero. But as you can see, we have a few false positive and we have quite a few false negatives. Okay, telling us we need to work on the model some more. And we can also compute those metrics called accuracy, um, precision, recall, and F1, which are interesting metrics for classifiers. I won't go into these too much, um, but you, you can read about them. They're important metrics for classifiers. Okay, so there you go. My endpoint works um, and, um, and it's predicting quite okay. So, um, now I guess we'd like to um, look at data capture and model monitoring. So let's do this in a different video.